Welcome. Let's assume we want to have a UI float above the capsule, like you can see here. How can we achieve that? I think there are two main methods, which I will call floating screen space UI on the left and world space UI on the right. These two methods have certain pros and cons, and we should choose depending on what our project requires. Let's see how they differ in order to make the best choice for our project. Floating screen space UI on the left lives in screen space. During rendering, it is placed on top of the rendered 3D scene. Imagine we're watching this scene through a window and this UI is a sticker on the window. Per default, the UI will not move, which is not super useful. But we can check the capsule's position each frame and move the UI accordingly. Finally, we can add an offset in screen space to move it up. Now it moves like the one on the right side. On the right, we have World Space UI, which lives in 3D space. It has a position and orientation. Imagine the sticker is now placed somewhere outside of the window in the 3D world. Making the UI follow the capsule is straightforward. We simply make the UI a child of the capsule in the hierarchy and add a little bit of offset that points towards the sky to move the UI up. This main difference has a bunch of consequences that we will explore now. The first we already talked about. Making the UI follow the capsule. When using floating screen space UI, we need to set the UI position manually each frame. Using world space UI, on the other hand, the positioning is handled automatically. The only thing here we need to do is to make the UI a child of the capsule. Next, staying above the capsule. Using floating screen space UI, above means upwards on the screen. If I tilt the camera down, you can see what I mean. On the left, the UI now has a horizontal offset in 3D and not towards the sky anymore. The offset is applied relative to the camera's orientation. On the right, in world space UI, above will still point towards the sky, no matter how we move the camera. Next, is the UI facing the camera? Floating screen space UI will automatically face the camera at all times. It appears exactly like before. World Space UI on the other hand has a position and orientation in 3D space and will appear warped when viewed from different angles. Next, scaling with distance. Floating Screen Space UI will by default keep its size regardless of the distance to the capsule. World Space UI on the other hand will scale with distance. Next up, Occlusion. I will rotate the camera until a block appears in front of the capsule. Floating Screen Space UI will by default not be blocked by 3D geometry. On the other hand, World Space UI is part of the 3D scene and will be occluded by things in front of it. Next affected by lighting and other effects in your scene. I will increase the light levels for a second. Floating screen space UI is not affected by lighting, whereas world space UI is affected and now barely visible. The same is true for other effects in your scene, like for example fog. Finally, user interaction. Here I look specifically at the Unity game engine. With floating screen space UI, user interaction like clicking a button 
works out of the box, like it works for other screen space UI. For world space UI, depends on the UI system you use. The older system, Unity UI, supports this, and you can set it up fairly easily. The newer system, UI Toolkit, however, as of today, does not support it. But there are custom solutions that use ray casting to make it work somewhat. As you can see, there are many differences. And those are not all. If you like to use one of those methods, but there is a downside to it, you can sometimes implement a solution or find one on the internet. For example, our screen space UI did not follow the capsule automatically, but we could implement a solution to move the UI. Or if we want to use world space UI, but need the UI to always face the camera, we can implement a solution that rotates the UI towards the camera each frame. This is often called billboard UI. But other differences are harder or impossible to overcome. Like for example partially occluding a UI like on the right side when we want to use floating screen space UI. So we should think about which solution fits our project better. How would I decide? I think I would ask myself this question. Should the UI feel like being part of the 3D scene? If, for example, I wanted to have a computer screen like this, I would definitely choose World Space UI. However, for some UI floating in mid-air, like the one above the capsule, I probably would choose floating screen space UI in most cases. Why? Well, UI is fundamentally made to be seen and interacted with by the user. It is short for user interface after all. Floating screen space UI per default is always facing the camera, it's not scaled or warped and is not affected by your 3D scene. This makes it legible and easy to interact with. With world space UI on the other hand, there can be a bunch of conditions that make the UI illegible or hard to interact with. It could be occluded, there could be no light or too much light, could not face the camera, could be too big or small, and more. Regarding the limitations of floating screen space UI, some can be solved fairly easily. For example, we can scale the UI with distance or hide the UI completely when the capsule is not visible. Essentially, borrowing a little bit of the characteristics of World Space UI. I hope this comparison was helpful to pick the right method for your project. If you are interested in floating screen space UI and are using Unity, you might be interested in an asset store package I made that greatly simplifies this. It takes care of positioning the UI and provides some additional features like hiding and modifying the UI when occluded. Links down below. Thanks for watching.